Good morning and welcome to our daily reflection for Monday the 28th of September. Who has the power in our lives? Is it the government? The Queen? God? Somebody else? Our reading this morning is taken from the book of Acts chapter 19 verses 8 to 20. He entered the synagogue and for three months spoke out boldly and argued persuasively about the kingdom of God. When some stubbornly refused to believe and spoke evil of the way before the congregation, he left them, taking the disciples with him and argued daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This continued for two years so that all the residents of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that when the handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick, their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. Then some itinerant Jewish exorcists tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the, Je the Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva were doing this. But the evil spirit said to them in reply, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered them all, and so overpowered them that they fled out of the house, naked and wounded. When this became known to all residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, everyone was awestruck, and the name of the Lord Jesus was praised. Also, many of those who became believers confessed and disclosed their practices. A number of those who practiced magic collected their books and burned them publicly. When the value of these books was calculated, it was found to come to 50,000 silver coins. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. So who has the power? In different societies, it can be difficult to know who has the power. Look at our own society here in Britain. The Queen doesn't have the power, even though she's our monarch. The power here lies with the government and the parliament. The question of power, how to get things done, is at the heart of many debates today. What are the alternatives to a government and parliament like ours? At one end of the scale, there are societies where the leader simply decrees what's going to happen. If people don't like it, that's tough. And the police and tanks are sent in. At the other end are societies that have much discussion, referendum voting, so much lobbying in newspapers and the media that people drown in a sea of words and paper. The real things that are supposed to happen are lost in a fog of multiple compromises. In the middle of these scenarios is political power, how to order, how to steer or arrange the way society functions. This is only one aspect of a much larger question, how to transform people's lives. Individuals can have their lives transformed one by one, so society transforms with them. But this is a slow way of doing it, and some things cannot wait while this happens. William Wilberforce and his friends wanted to end the evil slave trade. If they had waited long enough until enough people were transformed and agreed with them to end slavery, it would have taken much longer than it did. William Wilberforce, along with other anti-slave campaigners, knew they had to do something else. A propaganda campaign was organised across the country, while Wilberforce represented the campaign in the House of Commons. Wilberforce was an MP and worked with his friend William Pitt the Younger. Eventually the initial bill banning slavery became law in 1807, 20 years after it started. Ephesus, where Paul was currently, was the centre of power, magical power, political power and religious power. Paul, in his ministry, was demonstrating that the power of the name of the Lord Jesus was stronger than all. 
Aprons and handkerchiefs that touched Paul's hands could heal if they touched the skin of the sick and the evil spirits left the healed. The itinerant Jewish exorcists tried to cash in on this healing. They tried to use the name of Jesus to clear the sick of evil spirits. But unfortunately it all went wrong. The man with the evil spirit leapt on the magicians and overcame them. They fled out of the house naked and wounded. The demon had respected the name of Jesus, but had no respect for the exorcists. The name of Jesus had the power to overcome the exorcists. Luke had emphasised before that the gospel does provide power, but it's not magic. Magic attempts to gain power without paying the price of humble submission to God. God is the power, not the magic. God's power is demonstrated in the burning of the magic books by the magicians who became believers. They burnt their own books. They confessed and disclosed their practices and followed Jesus. And we also had the mentioning of money, which doesn't bode very well for the people of Ephesus. In Philippi, when the gospel had a financial impact, then trouble was just around the corner. Help us how many of us believe in magic. We see magicians on the stage or the TV, but that's not the sort of magician that was in our readings. The magicians we see rely on slate of hand or confusing us to look somewhere else rather than what they are actually doing. Some people believe in fortune tellers, tarot cards and other things. As Christians, we should only believe in Jesus and God. They are the ones that have the power in our lives. They have the power to transform our lives, if we want them to be transformed. Amen. Let us pray. Father, help us to transform our lives with your power. Help us not to be drawn in by the magicians in our lives who promise so much, but who go against our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.